right. Chuck Karnreich says, great idea for the podcast. Here of course it was. Topic. Well, yes. Yeah. Um, preparing for a deployment, what not to forget, who, what, where, when of asking for help on a deployment, and support for newbies just starting daily claims. Let's hit the last one first. Okay. Newbies don't do dailies. Newbies don't do dailies. You got to get some experience and you got to give them a reason to give you dailies. They're a little bit different. That's There's, right. They're a little bit more of an, under a microscope. Um, <laughs> yes. And so um, you, they want to make sure that you know what you're doing before they just go give those to you. The, that realm does not have time to train people. No. Yeah. So exactly. So in other words, um, great questions, Chuck. Um, we're going to kind of dig into the last one here a little bit just to kind of dispel any, um, ideas, I guess. Um, daily claims are typically going to be water claims, like regular, these are regular homeowners claims are not cat claims. Um, so they're going to be dishwasher breaks, you know, ruins all the hardwood floor and downstairs. Right. Or, you know, kid throws Stretch Armstrong in the toilet and the family goes out of town for the weekend and house floods from upstairs, you know, because of Stretch Armstrong. Um, those kinds of claims, which are complex, they have a lot of moving parts. They may have may include a lot of coverages. Right. So you're going to be definitely talking about the, the dwelling coverage. Right, you're going to be talking about the contents coverage. You're going to be talking about uh, loss of use coverage, so you can do ALE and things like that. Yep. And they can get really, really big, really, really fast. And if you don't have any experience running claims as a property adjuster, um, you're you're going to have you're going to struggle big time on those claims. And it'll take you it'll take you days to do one daily claim that it might take an experienced property adjuster a couple of hours. Right. right. And, and most of the time, most of the time daily claims, uh, are generally run by staff adjusters. Yeah. Um, yeah. so there's not a lot, I mean, you have some of these outlier, smaller carriers, uh, they're going to have firms that they use. Um, but even then they probably have some guy that's been doing dailies in his market for a long time and yeah. that's their go-to and good luck kicking that guy to his position. Right. You right. know, right. Exactly. That too. So, and, and just to, just to kind of piggyback on that, what a daily claim really is, is that the carrier needs help with some local, regular old, regular business right. kinds of claims, regular residential or commercial, whatever it is. Um, they may have, they may do a reorganization where they move people out of the area so they don't have anybody there. So there's no staff adjusters in the territory. So they might bring in IAs to temporarily to run dailies in those areas. Um, I've done some of that work. Um, they may have two adjusters in that area and they really need four. And while they're tr trying to hire the other two, or right. maybe they just say, you know what, it's cheaper just to have the IAs do it. They, these IAs, these two guys have been, you know, it's guy and it's gal, whoever it is. They've been running claims here for us for six years they do a great job. Why do we need to hire anybody else and pay them for company car benefits, you know, 401k, yada, yada, yada. And we can just pay 250 bucks a claim or whatever it is. Um, so it's, it's kind of like NFIP in that it's, it's a little bit more challenging to get into and you need to have more experience to do it. But it's also a, a good way to go. Once you have a couple of cats under your belt, then those daily opportunities are going to po really pop up. Mm -hmm. and become available to you. And, and if you are, especially a year like this year, if you're willing to stay home and say, listen, I'll take whatever property claims come in in my area, I live in Des Moines or I live in wherever. Um, I'm not going on hurricanes. I don't want to travel. I have no desire to go to the coast for any reason whatsoever. Um, least of all to go, you know, Taco Bell's, the windows are blown out. It's not even open, right? I can't right. go to Walmart. I can't do anything. Hotel, I have to stay two and a half hours away from, you know, the, where all my claims are because that's the closest hotel that's actually, you know, can take people. Don't want to do that. Right. And that's, that's, a, that's a reality on hurricanes. It's not easy. It's yeah. challenging in so many more ways. Lake Charles, different. people were staying all the way over in Baton Rouge. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So you might have to have like a several hour drive one yeah. way. So anyway, if you stay home, they're going to pile it on you. 
right? Because they still, I firms still have contracts with carriers in in Des Moines. If you live in Des Moines, and if all the, their their field adjusters, all the IAs leave that area, they the claims still come in. The dishwasher doesn't care what's what time of year it is, if there's a hurricane or not. To, it's going to break when it breaks, right? That was not me. That was me. Um, so that's a good way to do it. And I know several adjusters this year that called me like, Matt, I don't know if sh- should I stay here and should I stay home? And do-? I was like, listen, if you don't want to go to the coast and get all up into that business, stay home. Cause you'll, you'll be, you'll be even busier and you'll, it's, it's good relationship. Building. If you can handle it, if you can handle the extra, all that extra volume, then you can stay home and do it. But you get, you know, long story short on that question, you're going to have to have some experience before, um, you can get some daily property claims. Now, if you've already got a couple of cats under your belt, you've got some property experience and you're a newbie to daily, then yeah, there's there's a good way to um, kind of get started with that. And, and it's different than cat. Are you an insurance adjuster? Then you need insurance adjuster. If you make your living from handling claims as an independent adjuster, then you must get errors and emissions and general liability insurance coverage. I really think you should get both of them. It doesn't matter if you're a W-2 or 1099 or work carrier direct. Protect yourself with professional liability insurance from Kaplik. To find out more and to download the Insurance for Adjusters free guide, go to cplic.net slash adjustertv. Then yeah, there's there's a good way to um, kind of get started with that, and, and it's different than CAT in that with when you go on CAT, if pilot calls you and says, hey, you know, we want to send you to Baton Rouge for a hurricane with Allstate, and you say yes, then they're going to pile work on you, and you're only working for pilot Allstate. You you don't work for anybody else. Right. Don't even try. I hear stories, but where people try it. Maybe they are successful. I think most of the time they're not going to be. They they get think, busted. They get busted. They think they're going to try and game the system and make even more money. Or don't even just stick with the one thing. Just don't right. try to stay in your lane, <laughs> right? But on the daily side, you know, if you're in Dallas or you're in Des Moines or you're like an underserved area, like places outside of the South or outside of major cities, Odessa, Texas, Odessa, Texas. You know, we'll say up here in Montana. Idaho, yeah. Wyoming, there are very few daily adjusters running claims, and we need people up here. Um, I know what I'm doing next year. If you want to build, yeah, <laughs> if you want to build a business as a daily adjuster, you m- may necessarily need to take claims from Alacrity, Pilot, Ebrol, J and B's claims, Acme claim. You know, right. who, you know, I've just made up those last two, but what you may have because they mainly give you, yeah, Bob's claim service. They may only give you you know, two claims every two weeks, each one of those individually. You want to have like, I would say between seven and maybe 15 claims a week as a daily adjuster, especially if they're large, like water claims. You get a lot of water claims in the area, like in the Northeast and the Northwest, you're getting a lot of water claims. Um, that's a that's a full, a four, 15 claims a week as a daily adjuster is a full load, right. right? As a staff adjuster, when I did staff, they wouldn't give us any more than like 12 a week because their claims were all so big. Right. Um, so you may have to be on a bunch of different rosters and take claims from a bunch of different companies to make a daily business work. And I know guys that do daily and a lot of them do very, very, very well. And they never leave home. Never leave. So talk about support for daily claims. So mm-hmm. give you a big difference here. When you go on a, go on a cat, you know, yeah. a hurricane, um, even a small, you know, hurricane, uh, hailstorm or something like that. Um, your IE firms are going to set up uh, help centers. They're going to have a place for you to go to. They're going to have a resources. They're going to help you. Hopefully, um, you know, most of them do. Uh, you're going to get support out there in the field, um, especially on really large events. You're going to get support. You're going to have a place to go to. You're going to you're going to have multiple managers in there that you right. can go to and ask questions to help you get through issues. He's that talking you're about like help. We call them help rooms or war yeah, rooms. Help rooms, war rooms. Right. You're not going to get that with dailies. They're going to expect you to know what you're doing when you get there. When they send you a claim, they're not going to there. You cannot call them and say, Hey, how do I set up this file? How do I, you know, where do I, um, you know, how do I picture frame this, this, uh, this water spot on this roof? 
on the ceiling. I mean, there's all that stuff. You're just not going to get that help doing dailies. So, the, so to answer your questions, if you do happen to get some dailies, you're not going to get help. And that's the reason why newbies don't do dailies because the firms don't have time to train you. Right. And they may, so the, and the firms that, that are running dailies in that area, you may have one manager and that's it. And that right. person is your support. They're your, if you, if you need to pull a prior, you reach out to them. Every you're right. there, you're, there's one point of contact. And he doesn't have time to babysit you. Yeah. So he may have, he may be managing it several other territories as well. So it's, there's limited resources a lot of the time. Um, I would say you, you really need to be able to hit the ground running and be experienced right. before you can take daily claims. Um, so you got, and you kind of have to prove yourself that you're willing to, you know, right. You, that you can do it and that you can turn in a good claim. You've got good customer service and you can turn over claims quickly um, before they'll start giving you much more complex claims like daily claims. Cause like I said, I mean, there's a lot of different, you have to get, you, you have to get into the policy on daily claims, hail claims, you know, usually, oh, it's got a hole in it. I'm, I'm paying for it. And you're not having to pull the policy out every time you see something. With daily, you're looking to see what the limits are on this particular policy for ALE. You're looking to see what the limits are on for special limits for, well, the insured also said that they had, you know, five, $575 in cash sitting on the kitchen counter during the fire and it burned up, right? Can I pay him back for that? How much if you crank, you're opening up the policy for that, right? So you're, right. you're opening up the policy for almost everything on, on a daily claim. So you have to be, you got to know the policy as well. And you'll, it's a, it's a great way to learn policy or look to like really, really learn policy. Um, cause you're going to learn policy doing cat too. Cause you still have to get in there and you still have to understand how the coverages work and everything, but it's a really good education on, you know, the, the minutia of, how those policies work, what's covered, what's not covered, to what limit is it covered. Though you have a basic homeowner's policy. Yeah. That pretty much the the basis of most of those policies are the same. They're not all the same from carrier to carrier. No, on no. what they cover, the amounts they cover, how they calculate their coverage, there it's different from carrier to carrier. And some people, I mean, some carriers will even change your 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 uh, sheds, you know, your your other structures that's not part of it's not part a it's 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 on another part of the, the policy they yeah. cover it in different areas so you have to know those things yeah you know um and just to give you an example some some states have different rules like you know i'm gonna just go ahead since it's the fresh one that we just went to was you know and in louisiana you have a separate hurricane deductible okay yeah, yeah. that's completely different and people don't realize that you know, and so, so there's all these different things you have to learn about policy, and every every carrier is different. So when you do dailies, you it's so important that you you have to a know what you're doing and b know how to read policy. Yeah, you know, absolutely. and how to interpret the policy and how to apply the policy properly. And again, you have to show proficiency in doing that, or they have to at least know that hey, you've got some idea of what you're doing. And by just saying hey, I'm just brand new, just got my license, I've never done a daily before, can I have a daily? Yeah. It's just probably not going to happen. happen. And I'm not trying to say that being condescending and saying good luck, no, buddy. No. It's just, that's just the reality of it. So, yeah. And so, and so somebody coming in fresh, like if you're a restoration contractor or you're a, ge you're a general contractor or a builder or something like that, and you have a lot of experience in, in building trades, yeah. it could be a different story. You may need to just get really good at Xactimate and then, well, that's true. And learn, you know, you could probably slide into that kind of role, but you're going to have to show that you're like, you're not just like your previous job was you were selling cars or you were a golf pro with no, no construction experience or, at all. If you show up already kind of in the business and you You're were on the, just on the on other side. Food network. Yeah, exactly. Or something like that. <laughs> Precisely. <laughs> so, and again, I mean, the benefit of uh, doing cat is that they're going to, they're going to hand you on a, on a hailstorm that you're going to get 40 hail claims and, 38 of them are going to be HO5s and the other two might be something, you know, might be, you know, you might get like a farm and ranch or you might get a whatever, right? right? Or an HO3 or something like that or a DP or a, you know, a, a condo claim, something. Right. But you're going to have, the vast majority are going to be cookie cutter claims. You're going to be doing the same claim over and over again, same coverages, same everything, right? And probably in the same neighborhood with the same, the same builder, you know? Right. So the houses are all similar. So this is how you build your muscle memory, how you build your experience level, seeing it over and over and over again. And this is why I always say before you ever get to even on cat or any claims at all, you're doing this at home. 
before you go because it's it'll just ex- take your training and just ramp it up instead of like hitting the wall and going straight up with with the learning curve you're already ramped up into it so my favorite was i had five claims all in the same street cookie cutter track home neighborhood mm-hmm. and uh of the five three were exactly the same i can beat that one so like you know just, that was my well gonna, yeah i mean you're matt allen but you know for me the the so I be that I mean, because I was, I'm not out. So, but no, it was just like I was like, man, this is gravy. And then the other two were exactly alike. So yeah. it was, there was not much different I had to do on them. This 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 has only happened like just a couple of times in my whole career. And this particular one was absolutely unique. And it was in St. Charles, Missouri, which is on the other side of the river in mm-hmm. St. Louis. And I had 36 claims for the rental properties, all rental properties, all for the same owner. So at one point of contact, which was the property manager, the owner was retired and he had properties all over the country. And I wasn't talking to the, ever going to talk to the owner. I was going to talk to the property manager and they were built in the seventies and they were all brick and they were all 700 square foot foot houses. And they were all exactly the same. They all, and it was all, they all had three tab roofing on them. The roofs were all identical and they all, they all were hammered. I feel like I'm saying all a whole bunch here, but they, yep. they were all, they were literally identical. No metal fascia, no window wraps, no gutters, no screens, no siding, no fence, just roofs, right? Little like, they were like, I don't know, 14 square. Or something. They were small. Just little, easy. Super yeah. easy. Set up a macro and just. Listen, it's, it was the, it was the perfect storm. It was one point of contact for 36 claims. It was commercial claims. So it was a higher percentage and a higher fee bill, right? For those, even though they were pretty small claims, I scoped all, I got out there at six o'clock in the morning I met the property manager and he, we looked at three of them and I was like, yeah, this one's maybe this one too. You know, I took pictures. I took pictures of all of them. I mean, it did each one as an individual claim. This is why commercial claims are so good is because a lot of times you may have one policy with 36 buildings on it. But you can, each one of those is an individual claim and you bill each one as an individual yeah. claim. So he was like, well, it looks like you know what you're doing. You know, I don't expect, you know, I, I said, listen, if any of this thing's different, you know, if I got any questions or whatever, I'll call you. He's like, I'm going to go get some breakfast and then just give me a call when you're done. I mean, I didn't have to, the, all the homeowners or all the renters knew that somebody was coming and it was gonna be, they were going to be there for, for five minutes or however long it took me to ladder. I mean, I walked my ladder down the street and like just leaned it up on the house, took my Photos went around. I mean, I scoped them all just to make sure because right. guaranteed something. Would, nothing did. No, no, nothing That's snuck greatness. up on me. I was done by. I got all those done, and I went back to my truck and wrote them up, and it was copy and paste, copy from project, copy from project. Put all, I had to do all the pictures and label and everything. That took that was the thing that took the longest. I had activity Labeling diaries. Photos. <laughs> the activity diaries. I had a, a like a text document open with with the because it was the same thing over and over again. And I just copy and pasted those in, did the invoices and wrote all the, the totals down and then called the guy and he's like, well, meet me over at Arby's off the interstate over there and sat there and wrote checks. I didn't, I, thankfully <laughs> I didn't have to, I didn't have to write checks, but oh, really? I was done at three o'clock in the afternoon, 36 great. commercial claims. That's greatness. That was like, it's a nice payday. That was a big payday. <laughs> and it nice. was, Oh, it was glorious. And that's, that's one of the things about the commercial that when we talk about commercial, it's not just that they're bigger claims, right? That the fee bill is different. It's a little bit bigger. It's that generally speaking, you're dealing with somebody who's a bit, either a business owner or they're the property manager and you really, and you only have usually one point of contact, right? So there's only one person you're dealing with for a whole bunch of claims, right? And even if the contractor's there, you know, it's still one contractor, I'm not making 36 different phone calls to contact every single person that lives in each one of those houses to set up the appointment. I'm not having to coordinate with 36 people. I'm not having to call them all back later for yep. something. It's one, one person, phone one call. Person. Yep. One day closing 36 claims. And they were close. I mean, they were done. I was done with them. I turned them in four o'clock, went and got a steak, called my buddies. Yeah, no, we're still out in the field. I've been buying my buddy steaks after that day. Yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah. So, but they were getting claims like that too, which is, you know, which is nice. What was the first part of this one? So preparing for deployment, what not to forget. And then the next part of that is who, what, where of asking for help. So I think we kind of hit the, the help one already. Yep. So when you're preparing for deployment. Clean underwear. 
Yeah. Yeah. Let's talk about it. So stuff that you take with you, right? So you want to have, when I was doing cat, I had a bag, a duffel bag, one of these, you know, you go to Cabela's or you go to the Bass Pro or Walmart, you know, sporting goods section and get the $15 duffel bag. And it's got two weeks worth of socks, black socks. It's got two weeks worth of underwear, one pair a day. It has just cut it in half and turn them inside out. Yeah, right. Yeah. Um, I would have at least a week's worth of t-shirts, but I probably I got to the point pretty quickly where I I had bins full of clothes everywhere. Um, because the the reason why you bring all that, and then you have like two or three or four storm shirts, um, maybe two storm shirts, and then I would get like some solid color golf shirts that kind of match those shirts. They just didn't have like company right. logos on them as backups. Because if I show up wearing a golf shirt. People aren't, you know, it's as long as I got like the, the company hat on and the company door magnet, and I hand them a card with company, you know, logo on it. You can get away with not wearing a storm shirt for, and why, you know, if, the, if your storm shirts get dirty and it's not laundry day yet. So then that, that's, that's about how long it's going to be before you get a break to where you can stop and take three hours or whatever, however long it takes and do laundry. Right. So you can wear the, I, I was, the reason why I wear the t shirts because you can wear, you could put a fresh t-shirt on every day, wear the same golf shirt for two or three days in a row, maybe before it starts to get a little, depending on how hot it is. If it's like cool fall or you're in the Northeast or something like that, or it's a cool summer in Minnesota. And yeah, not the places I work. Texas. <laughs> I mean, you may have to change all of your clothes every, every day. day. So the same thing with thing with pants. Like, so you've got, you know, several pairs of maybe three or four pairs of khakis, always mm-hmm. khakis. As an adjuster, of all the things that you've got to have, there is really none more important than your state adjuster license, especially your very first one. You're gonna need it to do just about everything else. Some adjuster schools even require you to have one before they'll let you enroll. Adjuster TV has partnered with Adjuster Pro because Adjuster Pro provides a comprehensive and easy to use way to get and maintain adjuster licenses. Most importantly, Adjuster Pro was founded by independent adjusters and the team at Adjuster Pro is dedicated to helping you thrive as a claims professional. You'll find everything you need to get licensed in one place. Go to adjustertv.com slash adjuster pro right now. Um, and then they'll, they'll stay clean enough to wear so you can wear them for a few days before people are like yeah we're all different in that regard because i have some plastic tubs that i would load up and i have how many pairs i have eight pairs of pants i have eight golf shirts they're all the same color and i have you know pretty much eight of everything i find time to do laundry i i find the time one day a week you know, find wash and fold places too. That'll do yeah. That stuff. And I, I know a lot of, and that's the other thing. A lot of guys, they'll use the wash and fold places versus if I'm, you know, I was using an RV some of the time this past year. And sometimes I was in a hotel or in the evenings when I was, you know, finished writing claims or whatever. So I was organizing, I go throw a load in the washing machine, go upstairs, work for 45 minutes, set my alarm, run downstairs, move them over, then go back up. And so I would just work that in. So for me, it was, you know, eight changes of clothes that I would carry with me. Um, if you can carry an extra monitor with you, I would strongly suggest you having an extra monitor. We yeah. talk about things to that, that will help tremendously. Um, especially, you know, when you're important photos doing stuff, I mean, you can just have an extra screen doing things. Uh, that's what I have. So yeah, extra monitor. And they also sell these, these little portable monitors that are even for a laptop, they look like a tablet and they fold up like they have a cover, like a tablet, but all it is is just a monitor and you just set it up off to the side there. Yeah. Um, I mean, you could use an iPad. Well, I mean, I don't know. Will that work with the PC? I don't know. I don't know. There's probably a lot of different ways. I mean, monitors monitors are so cheap. (laughs) Yep. I mean, that was like $200 for that TV right. right there. Well, you get these 17 inch, you know, portable monitors, LCD, LED monitors that, you know, I think it was 160 bucks is what I paid. Mm-hmm. Well, did you just not change that? <laughs> yeah. so, anyway. Nobody knows. Uh, if you're listening to this, you can't see what we just did. Don't worry about it. So, uh, so that I would strongly suggest a second monitor if you can get it. And even when you're working in a help center, I mean, I had a second monitor and I just went, when I was working in the help center, I just set myself up over there with two monitors, man, just working away. 
you know um it it is a definite productivity enhancer yeah. when you're when you're busy uh what else what do you think about like a, a, a um I was going to say external mouse, but just like a plug-in mouse or like a USB mouse. Yep. Bluetooth USB mouse. Yep. Because um, this can get, I mean, those laptops that State Farm, I don't know if they still, I know they're they are giving out. I, would little, use their, I had a brand spanking new one. Do they have the little red button in the middle? No. No. Okay. When I first I had touch that. pads. It was the mouse that had the little, it wasn't a mouse trackpad. It was a little. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. You just like. HPs have those things. Yeah, uh, I was lucky. Mine, I was the first person to ever use mine. It was pristine and clean, nice. and everything. I, matter of fact, everything I had was first still time have use, AOL on it, except for no. Uh, the only thing that wasn't brand new that I had was the camera, and uh, that thing crapped out after about three days. I had yeah. to get me a, another camera. Um, but yeah, so I would say a monitor is a must. Uh, bring yourself. A, they provide you with a mouse, um, a, one with a a corded mouse, you know, um, you're not supposed to hook up anything other than what they gave you to their computers. Um, you can get away with some stuff, you know, I mean, like, especially if it's like a Microsoft wireless mouse, it's those drivers and everything are already built into right, it. Right. So they're just plug and play and move on. So, um, everybody else, you're using your own equipment, so it doesn't matter. But what else was it? Um, cases of water. Um, yeah. really important when you're going, because you're going to places that have been hit pretty hard. Okay. Water is a commodity that, um, in the back of my truck, like whenever, a Mad Max, the gas. Yeah. Thing. I'm not, when I took off for a deployment, I had no less than four cases of water in the back of my truck. Um, whenever I took off, yeah. um, and, and I would go through them because water was sometimes you get there when you first get to an area there's nothing in the stores. Yeah. There's absolutely. I mean, you think the toilet paper scare earlier this year was bad. Huh, okay. Right. Go to a place right after a big storm and there's no water on the shelf. And, uh, and I would take, uh, you know, a couple of days of food, you know, a, a few days worth of food, make sure that you've got some food because again, you may go to an area where everything's closed or everything's crowded. It's so yeah. crowded. It, the lines are forever. And so you don't, you know, time is a, as a as a commodity Huge. that uh, you don't get back, and so sitting in line at you know a drive through or standing in line at a restaurant to get fed is just not enjoyable. Um, you will find out waking up early and going to Waffle House or Denny's or somewhere like that becomes your friend, you know, because that may be the only meal you see for the next fourteen hours, and then that can happen because again, places are busy. People are you know a lot of people are in town, and uh, most people don't wake up early. So, right, right. Uh, but those, but as far as what you bring with you, I always bring extra food um, with me. I bring, um, you know, that as many changes of clothes, at least a week's worth of clothes, and that way I only have to do. If I've gone for two weeks, I'm only doing laundry once. Right. You know, um, the monitor is a big thing for me, and then water. Water is pretty. I mean, I can't stress enough about bringing cases of water yeah. and uh, and having those with you. And it may be that. And this is not common, but, you know, sometimes the water system may have been affected. And so yep. the hotel might be like, or the art, the campground, if you're part, if you've got an RV, they may say, listen, you got to boil water. Or you got to not, don't use the water right now until we tell you to, or we get it tested or whatever. Right. Um, I would add to that. And again, with the food thing, Jared Allen from Bully Bag, yeah. he brings like a, like a box full of Progresso soup. And he with the pull tabs on. Yep, and he's I've like, got a bunch of those. Like, a plastic spoon. I mean, I just chow down. So I'm I'm gonna bring peanut butter is your friend. Yeah, right. <laughs> so I'm gonna bring extra Cougar Paw pads. Yep. Right. Yep. I'm gonna bring my bin's gonna have all the extra chalk because on, on a hail deployment, that's the thing you run out of. And then you chalk. go to Target, and for some reason, not every Target has sidewalk, sidewalk chalk. chalk. You're like, where's the sidewalk chalk? What? Um, you know, the stuff that you, the little kids run. Oh, we don't have any of that. They got everything else, but they don't have that. Um, or, you know, and then you go to Home Depot and you get the soap stones instead. So, but, uh, printer paper, printer yeah. cartridges, those things, yeah. like you find yourself like halfway through a 17 page estimate print and it's, it starts gray lines and then it's like, you know, nine pages of nothing. And you want to be able to like see that, stop it. 
pop in a new cartridge and keep rolling. You don't want to have to stop, walk up to the insured and say, hey, listen, you know, if you're, if you're closing on site or whatever. I have to email it to you. cartridge went out and I got to go. I'm going to Staples is, I'll be right back. You know, you don't want to do that. You want to be always, everything that we do is revolves around saving time yeah. because the number one thing that separates us as property as, as independent adjusters is that we're closing claims, a volume of claims. And the more claims we can close, the more work the more, you have, the more work. Yeah. So the more work we're going to have, we're going to be, we're going to get more work done in a shorter period of time, which is going to show up on our paycheck. They give claims to the people that are producing, that are turning claims over. Right. So you're going to get more claims on your deployment versus the guy who only closes an average of three claims a day. And if you're closing in six claims a day, they're going to give you more claims. You're going to get more claims out of that right. swarm, even if you're both there at this, for the same amount of time. And you'll probably stay there for longer. And because you have higher production, then you start to kind of inch up into the superstar range on the roster so that you're going to get more deployments. They're going to send out the, the six claim a day, eight claim a day people out before they send out the three claim a day people. Right. Yep. So I'm going to get five deployments, you know, where I'm closing six or seven claims a day over the three claim a day guy who might do two deployments and complain that there's no work. Right. right? Or it's, it's on Facebook or social media, like whining and bitching about it. And well, this is the reality of it. And da, da, da. The reality is, you just got to work harder and better and, and harder. And I speaking of complaining on social media about your <laughs> IA firm or what you're doing. I actually saw somebody get cut because of something they wrote on Facebook. Oh yeah. They, you know? They're watching. And they, they blasted, they blasted their IA firm and they blasted the carrier uh, because they were frustrated. And, and what they complained about, I was having the same frustration, uh, but it wasn't the carrier's fault. And, um, but I was smart enough to just kind of call my friends and tell them these things. <laughs> this is what you do over happy hour when nobody's you know? within your shot. Right. And, and, uh, you know, and sometimes it's just, you know, you're just frustrated and, and the issue that you're dealing with today, you're not dealing with tomorrow, you know? So, but, uh, the other thing that I, I like to carry with me, um, talking about, you know, making sure that we're prepared, everything that I have, every tool that I have, I have two of them. Okay. I have two clipboards. I have two, oh, yeah. two pitch gauges. I have two measuring, measuring tapes. I've got two of everything. Something's going to break. All those things will break. Something may, f I've had, I've had a pitch gauge fall out of my bag, you know, fall out of my tool bag. I had no clue it had fallen out and I get to the next place. It's not there, but luckily I had a backup, you know, yeah. uh, redundancy for everything. Remember, so, um, if you ever heard anybody that's a prepper, you know, they'll tell you, um, you know, two is one and one is none, you know? <laughs> right. Yeah. So exactly. if you have one, you're out, you know, if yep. you have two, then you have one of it. Yep. You have one of those items. So, uh, so that's kind of the role that I make on the road. So whatever I take, I never have one. I have more than one. Yep. Okay. I always have double what I think I'm going to need whenever I go out. Yeah. So. This is, this is, like I just said, it all points back to, efficiency with time and any, anything that slows us down or stops us. Like if we, if we decide we want to buy a refurbished laptop or we're going to, you know, our, our uncle or our brother-in-law or somebody has got an old compact, you know, well, it's only about six years old. I think it'll, it should run it just fine. And you get like a trial version of Xactimate on there and it, it runs it. Okay. It's a little slow, whatever. That computer is going to cost you way more than a new computer because if your computer goes down, First claim of the day, it's eight o'clock in the morning and your computer crashes and you can't do anything, right? And then you're going to be using it all day. Then you now have to, you either just go scope all your law. You, you can't write an estimate right. until you have a new computer, right? So then you got to go down to Best Buy, you got to reinstall Xactimate. This could take you a half a day to do it. And that could be, if you're doing six claims a day, that's, you know, how many, yep. how much are you making per claim? 350. So that's a thousand bucks. Yep. Right. You just lost. And it costs yourself a thousand, you know, get a good laptop. You don't have to get, I don't think these days you got to get a, a gaming laptop. Um, I've, I've only ran with a gaming laptop one time. It was like a 17 inch, you know, great big old with the lights and stuff all right. over it. And it was super heavy and it broke down just, to, it lasted as long as the rest of them did. And it, it may have run exact made a little bit faster, but. But with, a, with that X1 now, it's, it's cloud-based. 
you know right i mean yeah you have a you have a a client but everything else all your data all that stuff it's it's all cloud it runs so much faster now you don't need the technology that you had before to yeah. run i mean on on 28 i mean it was a resource hog um x1 is yeah. not um you know also so you know with certain carriers you're in their system you're using their their equipment and everything else so you don't have you know you don't have access to exactimate mobile you know but if you're in that situation where you are using your own version and everything else and you learn how to use exactimate mobile you know and i've actually done a couple of claims on exactimate mobile it's a little wonky in some you know in the sketch part of it but everything else is exactly the same man if you can do that if you're if you have that available to you and your computer crashes out and then you can whip out your ipad real fast and you can finish up doing what you're doing it's a time saver yeah you know yeah. you know have redundancies the key so when you're when you're talking about things to take with you uh, make sure you have a backup for everything that you do so what are your thoughts about having 17 pairs of underwear versus seven hey 17 is one and seven is none that's right <laughs> um yeah so i guess to, to to kind of button that one up um what not to forget um don't forget to prepare when you're preparing yeah. for deployment, don't forget yeah. to have backups of stuff. Um, Act like you're not going to have a day off or have any time to yourself for at least seven, eight days. Yeah. You have know. an expectation that your time is no longer your own. And, and it's don't put off anything till, that's till tomorrow that you could do right now. Yep. Cause tomorrow Matt is going to hate your guts. Why didn't I just mm -hmm. do this last night or yesterday afternoon or whatever it was. Don't, if you kick the can down the road, you still have to just, it's still there. It's not going away. Right. So one of the things that I did here on one of the deployments that if you were going to use one of those, one of those laundry services, mm -hmm. you know, wash and fold places, um, buy colored underwears, not tidy whities. That was an advice that the guy gave. I don't know why, you know, do you wear tidy whities? I don't know. I don't, you know. But uh, I don't know. He said, you know, he said something about make them the color they're going to become. I don't know where it came from. Yeah. So, I don't know. Okay. I've, I've never had that problem. And even if, you know, I had like white underwear and they turned pink. Yeah. Who's going to see them? Pink. Like okay. A bunch of red, a bunch of red state farm <laughs> shirts. Um, and it, for the wash and fall, for people who don't know, um, who may have their own, you know, laundry machines or whatever, I've found wash and fold places, like a lot of laundromats mm -hmm. will have a, a wash and fold service where you go in and take a bag full of your laundry and I would separate the socks. Don't leave them balled up because yeah. they may not separate them for you. They'll put it on a scale and they'll charge you $1.25 a pound yep. to do your laundry, right? And they'll have it done within 24 hours or the, that afternoon or whatever it is. Yep. And they'll fold it all up however you want it. It's almost like a laundry, like a dry cleaner, like a dry cleaner, except for it's, they're not dry cleaning, they're just washing it in the machines. Right. They'll use their soap, right? And then it's all nicely folded and it'll be all wrapped in plastic and stuff. And you just go pick it up and you're off to the races and you don't have to spend three hours. If you want to take an afternoon off, like take Sunday afternoon off, or take Sunday off, right? Then you're not spending half the day doing laundry. You, you know, you maybe you dropped off your, your clean, your wash the day before you go pick it up and then you go watch a movie or you go play golf or you go, you know, you just go stare at a wall and like decompress your brain. Go fishing. Or you go, yeah, there you go. You go yeah. fishing. So people do that. Yes. People do do that. Okay. Uh, what, you got something else? No, I don't have anything. So Kelly Proctor. Kelly Proctor. Hello. Our boy Kelly Proctor says, uh, his question is a good topic for, and I guess it's, yeah, that's his question. So a good topic for newbies and some seasoned ones would be working with PAs, working with roofers, et cetera. And if you get a liability claim thrown at you, then probably how to work with lawyers on the opposing side. Um, he also says doing recorded statements. I, I think we'll tackle this, the, the common things that happen. If you get a liability claim thrown at you, then hope, then, then you've got some e and insurance, hopefully. Um, so you, if you're a W-2 adjuster, which nothing wrong with that. I did that for a very long time. Um, you'll have, you know, if you're a 1099, you probably have, you know, the IA firm may be charging you $5 per claim.
Hey, hey, Mr. Insured, how's it going? It's going great today. How are you doing? <laughs> Good. This is actually Guy Grant from Veteran Adjusting School. So you want to learn claims from the most experienced veteran adjusters, but you can't find anybody who will let you ride along with them? Then let me tell you about Adjuster TV Plus. Developed by Adjuster TV and its industry partners, including the high-end training center Veterans Adjusting School in Arizona, Adjuster TV Plus is a growing library of in-depth training videos created just for independent adjusters. Learn scoping and estimating from professional trainers and adjusters. Learn how to handle customer interactions with confidence. Learn the ins and outs of scoping and estimating exterior hail claims. And detailed videos about how to handle smoke, ice dam, water claims, and auto claims. Adjuster TV Plus also features the very best of three years of Adjuster TV's YouTube videos. Educational, entertaining, and inspiring. Come right along with us on Adjuster TV Plus. If you're a W2 adjuster, which nothing wrong with that. I did that for a very long time. Um, you'll have, you know, if you're a 1099, you probably have, you know, the IA firm may be charging you $5 per claim for, you know, to be on their, you know, I'm going to say, get your own, you know, um, Kaplik is the way to go for sure. 100% because those, as far as I know, they're the only, only company that does E and O for just for us, right. just for anybody that's re associated or re related to the insurance industry. Um, so, and then they also sell general liability insurance, which covers you for negligence and for the, all that kind of stuff. So that's how you work with lawyers. And when you, if you, if, and this is the difference between e, e, uh, Kaplik and like Hiscox, which is the other company I think that does, like right. they just do small businesses, like general liability and, e, and you know, you get a letter from an attorney as an adjuster, as an IA, and you've got Kaplik and they say, Hey, you know, we're saying that you're, you screwed up and we want to, you know, you're in trouble. You call Kaplik and you send them that letter and then they will, they help you through the whole thing. They'll like, they'll be like represent you and they'll, they, they'll if, make sure it stays out of court. And if it's got to go to court, then they'll help you with that part as well. It's not like you get dragged into court and then get, have to pay a whole bunch of money and then you file a claim with Kaplik and say, Hey, I just got sued for right. ne negligence and I lost. Can you help me? You start, you step one, the sec second you get a letter, you call them and, call and them, they'll right. take, they help you do the whole thing. Right. So that's to answer your question about that, Kelly, that's what you do with lawyers with, if you get a liability claim thrown at you, right. Working with, um, PAs and roofers and attorneys and things like that. The thing is, is that you, um, you, you do your job the way you normally do it, right? If I'm going to try to, um, I didn't used to do this and I think a lot of adjusters don't do it or they, you know, as, the longer you do this job, the more you want to have everybody there at the same time, I think. Um, so when I'm doing a claim, I want the homeowner there and I want their contractor there. If they have a PA, I want them there. The first inspection, right? I don't want to go do reinspections. I don't want to do, I just don't want to, I, I want to take care of it the first day. If, if I can leave that house with everybody nodding their head, yes, we're good to go. Numbers are good. We're, we're happy. Everything that we, we think that we need to do to have to get this claim closed is here. You know, the stuff that you definitely couldn't pay for, you know, we all addressed it together, looking at each other and nodding our heads and going, well, I can't do it. And well, you know, what about this over here? Blah, blah. So you negotiate a little bit of where, you have an agreed scope and pricing when you leave the insurance house. It is the absolute best thing in the entire world. The carrier wants that. The IA firm wants that. You want that. The insured wants, wants that. that. The contractor, everybody wants that. PAs want that. I mean, everybody wants it, right? So with PAs, it's a little bit different than with, with a contractor because the PA is going to take a percentage of the insurance proceeds, right? 10, 20 you know, 20 or whatever percentage it's, it's a, it's a chunk of it. Right. So that's why a lot of times people are scared of working with PAs because I'm going to write a $20,000 estimate and the PA is going to come back with an $85,000 estimate because it's full of fluff, right? PA with, with the assumption that, the, that the PA and the adjuster are going to negotiate down to something in between 20,000 and 85,000. The PA takes his 20% out of that. And hopefully the homeowner has enough left over to do the work. It's kind of the way that that whole thing goes. You can't fluff up to meet a PA's estimate. Right. You can only write it to what it act, what a contractor would do, would do it for. If the 
if the homeowner feels like they need to have a PA there, and in a lot of cases, maybe they, sh they do need to have a PA there to help them, um, then that's going to come out of their pocket and they're going to have to figure that part out. Is really what it boils down to. So you, you have some wiggle room. You can negotiate with things. If you can get everybody to agree, especially that first meeting, then you're it's a home run for everybody. So with working with contractors, a lot of those guys are using Xactimate. They're using Xactimate pricing. So if you, right. as long as you agree on the measurements, yep. I mean, what is there to argue about? The pricing exactly. is going to be the same. Unless they're they're adding on a premium for, we use you know solid gold nails and we hand nail it you know with uh, special Japanese hammers or yeah, we hand nail we don't use, we don't use right we don't use staple nail guns or staples or whatever, whatever it's calm it's the customary and reasonable whatever it is if if, if all you hear in the background while you're having that conversation is because the guys got air guns and compressors mm -hmm. all over the place and their the roofs are going on. It takes a day to put a, tear off right. and put a new one on. And this guy wants to charge extra for hand nailing. I'm sorry, but you know, the guy that's doing the, that roof right there can come over here and do this roof without hand nailing it without, and get the, get them the same. Right. And the know, same quality, same, same quality, everything. Yeah. same everything. Obviously, you know, there's some, there's installer error that can happen with any of this stuff, right? They can, the, the nails can be overdriven or if the setting's wrong or, right. you know, but that's fortunately I've not had to deal with PAs. No, it's rare. I don't, you know, I, I probably I, can count on two hands all uh, the PAs I've worked with. I've was on the other side of the business selling, you know, restoration and had them on our side, you know, but I've never been on the other side. Haven't, but because of being on the other side, I've seen some of their tricks and things that they like to employ. Yeah, and do and and, and and basically it's this and and whether it's property or whether it's auto and it's a body shop. Okay, some body shops they play this game where your insurance company is evil and we're going to advocate for you and we're going to get everything right. for you yeah. and we're we're ICAR certified and this means that we're we're at a higher standard and blah 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 and and, and what they do is they just send in supplement over supplement over supplement till they wear somebody down that they're going to agree with them and just give it to them so they'll shut up and go away. Right. You know, and, and believe me, they know that game and they know that some of these adjusters and desk adjusters are just overworked with a big load and they're going to just finally just agree to it just to get it off their desk because they've got to get it shut. And, and you get caught in the middle of it as the, as the field person. It's just the game. And it's not personal. I mean, I've I've seen people get really upset because they had to deal with PAs. I've gotten upset myself because I had to deal with shops that that you know just want to fluff the heck out of these these estimates, like trying to charge me two hours to set up a welder, you know, things like that. And they want to charge you, you know, this different rate for that, right? And it's just a bunch of fluff. Well, at the end of the day, they know that if they they're squeaky enough that they might get another 10, 15% yeah. on that claim, 20% on that the claim. Team. And if they get that, you know, 50% of the time, you know, they've added some pretty good profits onto them. And each one of those estimators is making money off a of profit anyway. So they're going to do what they can. And, it, and it's just, part, and that's just how you look at it. It's just part of the game and you don't take yep. it personal and just be professional, you know, um, do your job right. If you make a mistake, you know, um, fix your mistakes. You know, yeah, and and just move on with it, man. That's all you can do. Don't take it. Don't take anything personally yeah. ever. Yeah. And I don't care how much guys yelling at you and calling you all kinds of names. It'll, it'll happen. It'll come out of left field, and the whole, next thing you know, the guy's like you can. He's spitting on you. Yeah. He's yelling so much. I had a homeowner tell me, "I want your license number. I want your supervisor's name. I want all this stuff." You know, um, I'm taking all this to my lawyer right now. You know, and, Fine. And, and my response to that was, well, sir, if you're getting your lawyer, that conversation's over. <laughs> right. I'll see you. We're done. Yep. There's nothing else I can do. That's right. You know, I just wait to hear from him. And uh, it's a fast. And they go, well, well, maybe I don't really need to go to my lawyer if we can do this. You know, but yeah, it's just remember, nothing's personal. Nothing's personal. And, and uh, even if, even if, and I've had this happen before where I go out to a house and maybe I go at like seven o'clock in the morning, I go early and there's dew on the roof. The sun is like just coming up. And so the 
the back slope, which was the slope that was facing the storm, is in the shade. Mm-hmm. And this other side is like just barely got a little bit of sun. I can't really tell. Long story short, I can't. I'm looking at it and I'm like, I can't. I don't think there's any hail damage on this roof. I mean, there's a couple of dents and I'm trying to get good pictures and it's just not good lighting. It's just, I'm just not, it shouldn't have done it. Right. right. And then that one pops open for a reinspection two weeks later and the contractor's out there and you roll up and you're like, it makes you a little bit mad because you're like, I was already out here and I already said there wasn't any damage. Gosh darn it. Right. And then there's all these like, you know, bodybuilder, guy standing in the front yard and they're lifted pickup trucks with all their, you know, roofer yeah. graphics all over them and 15 ladders. And there's three of them there, there's two guys up on the roof and there's, you see chalk circles already. And you know, there's another guy, two guys standing in the front yard talking to the homeowner and the homeowner's doing this, you know, and like looking around there. I have no idea what's, you know, and you get up on that roof and it's totaled. I mean, it's, there's hail damage all over it. Yeah. Um, Holy smokes! Look at this. I'm circling. I do my test square. I do the whole thing, measuring everything. And I'm, sir. I, you know, I missed it the first time. I apologize. Here's your check. Bye. I mean, yep. it's, I'm not gonna like cry about it. I'm not gonna make excuses. I'm not gonna feel bad about it. I'm just gonna get it off my plate, get that guy taken care of, and move on down the road. You have to leave your ego and your pride at home. <laughs> so <laughs> big time. One more tip on contractors: when you talk to a homeowner and you ask them if they've they have a contractor already and they say yes and you say can you make sure that they're there at the time of the inspection yeah and they'll say sure if you get there and they say that your contractor couldn't make it there's probably no damage on that roof right 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 you know yeah. they, they they don't think they can get it it's a numbers game for those guys they're going to come in their bosses are telling them you know if, if it's a straight sales guy he's got to get so many contracts signed a week he's got to get so many inspections you know what we call you know, um, adjuster meetings done a week yep. or inspections done. And, and it's a numbers game for them. And they say, hey, if you're getting this many signed contracts, you get this many inspections a week, you're going to end up selling this many roofs and that shows activity and activity breeds activity. So just make sure you're out there doing something. Yep. Well, at the same time as that guy gets a little bit more experience under his belt, hey, he satisfied his little quota for getting a signed contract. He's hoping that, you know, and there might be some damage on the roof. And he's hoping he gets that one very – loose riding adjuster that's going to come out there and replace it. Or he knows that he doesn't have a snowball's chance in hell of getting this thing replaced. He's not going to waste his time. He's going to go work on something else that does, you know, that, that he knows for sure he's going to get paid on. And, and that's, oh, yeah. that's my, that's my experience from the sales side of it. That's my experience from it, from the adjuster side of it. You know, that's just the, that's, if there's no adjuster there at the time of inspection, chances are there's no damage yep. Yep. or not enough to justify replacement. Yep. And then, uh, all right, let's see. Kelly had one more in here. He's asking about recorded statements. That's generally a liability claims. Yeah. So doing cat property or even daily property. Um, I have never one time done a recorded statement ever in 20 years and never have recorded, uh, or videoed or anything, any kind of a, anything. Right. Ever. It just never happened. Of course, automobile liability claims, that's constant. Yeah. Even on comprehensive claims, sometimes um, they'll do a recorded statement depending on what type of comp claim it is. Yeah. Or a collision claim. It's a good question, though. Um, I think that uh, some people have that question, especially if they're coming from the auto side. Well, you know, what about recorded statements? Do I have to? Nope. Um, all right. So I had this one. No, I'm just kidding. Actually, I, this is this is kind of like war story. Okay. So, um, I want to talk a little bit about my experience as a roofer or as a roof sales guy. Okay, um, because I think it's instructive. <laughs> uh, it was certainly for me, big time. Mm-hmm. Um, I it was the end of, end of the season, and I was nothing really going on, and there was a little hailstorm um, that. A, a guy I knew who was a roofing contractor and he's like, man, come on up and help me out. We'll sell roofs, whatever. Blah, 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 blah. Great. I was like, okay, sure. Um, I'll give it a shot. And so I go up there and start canvassing, canvassing neighborhoods and doing everything and having adjuster meetings. And this is really like the main thing that was like the biggest learning experience was meeting all of these different adjusters. And so I met staff adjusters. I met, 
a lot of IAs. I met a lot of IAs who were worked for, or I shouldn't say a lot, but a handful that worked for like the big major outfits. And then several that were like, they're, you could tell they normally did just daily stuff and then they right. just happened to live in the area. And so they were getting some of this hail stuff. I had, and this is why immediately after this, I totally changed my tune in the way I dealt with contractors because I had guys, most of the adjusters that I met were jerks. They were, they were rude at the minimum and, and a lot of a lot of times outright hostile towards me just because I was a roofer, right? right. I was the roofer guy. Um, and I said at one time I knew as it was coming out of my mouth. I was like, this, he's not going to believe this. I'm like, listen, I've been doing claims for this company for 12 years. And I can tell you right now, if I was, this was my claim, I would have bought this roof. Yeah, whatever, man. Do this. It's like, I know you're not going to believe that, but it's true. Right. As, as a fact, it was, it was for a company that I worked for all the time. Um, and, and what I got from the adjusters was inconsistent at best. So I would go out, I had, you know, one that, that we looked at and with the adjuster up there, and it was a 312 ranch, you know, clear view of the sky, right in the middle of where the biggest hail fell. And it was like two and a half inch hail, just smashed. I mean, three sides of siding, big splatter marks with big dents in them, aluminum siding, all the fascia was all destroyed, all the gutters were all, I mean, it was textbook, like no brainer, easy write up. I'm in and out in 35 minutes, you know, because right. it's like straight gable. You know, and how long does it take to measure that and take pictures of that kind of damage? Yep. Not and write the it was not long at all, right? And this guy, everything we pointed out, he's like, nope, nope, sorry, I can't. You know, that's not hail damage or that's not it. great big hits, obvious. Like the Hague Engineering hail book hits. I mean, it was right. like I even pulled that out. I was like, well, this is you know Hague Engineering. I know like insurance people, they they believe these guys, right? And he said. <laughs> If you're interested in getting the absolute best property claims training available, then I want to tell you about my friends over at Veteran Adjusting School in Sedona, Arizona. As a licensed vocational school, Veteran Adjusting School trains you to become a complete insurance adjuster with a focus on catastrophe property adjusting. When you graduate from the Voss Trained Insurance Adjuster Program, you're ready to begin your exciting new career, whether as a daily adjuster or as a cat adjuster. Listen, there are many outstanding adjuster schools out there and you have to get some training somewhere. But Voss stands out among its peers for the depth and breadth of its program, as well as its continuing support and mentorship for graduates long after students become working adjusters. Go to adjustertv.com slash VAS now and chat with an enrollment specialist who will answer all of your questions and help you decide if Voss is the right choice for you. AdjusterTV.com slash VAS. I even pulled that out. I was like, well, this is, you know, Hague Engineering. I know like insurance people, they, they believe these guys, right? And he said, he said, no, you know, we're going to have, we'll have to supplement this one later uh, because, you know, what I really need to see is I need to see, you know, after, after the winter, the shingles will start to curl and that'll be an indication of whether they were, they had hail damage on them. If, <laughs> if they were hail damage, they would curl in the spring. And I was like, I literally don't know what to say to that because that is 100%. What, <laughs> and I'm like, this is the, this is the dialogue going on in my head. I'm not saying these things because I'm just like keeping my mouth shut for the most part, you know, just like asking questions about, oh, why is that? You know, what about these impacts? I mean, what do you think about that? Well, no, I mean, that's just uh, on and on and on. You know, that's old siding. I don't, it doesn't matter if it's 10,000 years old. If it has hail damage on it, the policy says pay for it, right? right. Here's the policy. It doesn't say, oh, well, if it kind of looks old, don't pay for it. It says hail damage is covered to dwelling. That's it, right? So guy wouldn't pay for anything. I knew that he had never looked at a hail claim before in his life. And he was just it's winging hilarious. it. hilarious. And he was wearing shorts. A lot of these guys were wearing shorts oh. and like, you know, like aqua socks or like some little like, yeah. I don't know. They had hey, when I was in on. Iowa, I came across the the one of the carriers that I was working for up there, I actually met another one of their adjusters and he was wearing shorts. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, I went there wearing, sweating, wearing pants. Yep. Yeah. So, and then on the flip side of that was we had one that, uh, we were canvassing kind of getting to the fringe of everything. And I was like, well, you know, 
we'll just do this one more cul-de-sac and then we're going to get out of here because this is, I don't think the hail got too much farther than this, if it even got over here. He had a one hole in the siding and we're like, well, you know, I looked at the roof, I looked at the roof and the roof was, I didn't see anything, right? And I experienced adjuster, a damage evaluator. And this was, this is where the, you know, me keeping my mouth shut was like, you know, I'm just going to keep my mouth shut, <laughs> which I think a lot of contractors are going to, will do, right? So a couple of days later, we had it, we set up an adjuster meeting with, with the adjuster and he came out and he's like, he wanted to wrap the house, the siding, vinyl for one hole on the gable end. It was like a, a ranch, it was a long ranch. And then uh, he's like, well, let's take a look at the roof. And I'm like, well, you know, I think the roof's probably, I mean, we could take a look at it and tell me what you think about it. But I, I think if there's anything, it's borderline at best, you know, whatever. I was just being honest. And I climb up the ladder and I start walking up to the to the ridge and he climbs up to the ladder and he gets about waist up to the to the gutter and does this number and says, well, just send me over your diagram and we'll get this one written up. I was like, and he starts, you know, doing this and yep, I see some here. I was like, I was getting ready to say what? <laughs> but I was like, well, I mean, I guess if, uh, you know, you're the decision maker here. So this is what contractors see yep. from us, right? They see extreme inconsistency, outright hostility from people. Like I had a guy, I, I pulled up, he got the, he was early. He's always, somebody's always early. I'm always trying to get there like right five minutes before or whatever. Yep. And he was standing in the front yard with the homeowner laughing and the homeowner was laughing and he like glanced over and saw me and did this and like scowled, scowled at like you. a cartoon, <laughs> like scowl. And I was like, okay, I see how this is going to go. Every, I mean, the roof again, totaled. He said no to everything. I'm like, listen, I mean, this, this test square is full of hits. These are all hits. You contractors. I mean, I, you, he starts, starts in on me and I'm like, I mean, I don't know what to tell you. This is, I'm going to take pictures and unless it is what it is. Right. You don't, and you don't have a whole lot yeah. of recourse anyway. Cause he's, what am I gonna do? Like call his manager and say, I mean, yeah, no, I mean, maybe I, I Nobody's ever called my manager or no contractors ever done. Anyway, so long story short, it was a, it was a, a very, 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 very instructive experience because I got to see the other side. I got to see that in which I, he kind of knew already, but as the roof salesperson, I don't make any money until the roof like, is sold. like a check yeah. is in my hand, right. right? It's not, it's not, it's even if the roof is sold and it's a contract get checks. signed. Yeah. Until you have somebody starts giving you money, you're not getting paid. And even then, even then, the guy who's like, you give it to the the, the boss, you got to wait for him to pay you because then he's got to, you know, and it's a All whole right. thing. So it was, it was a learning experience. And I, I have a lot of uh, sympathy for people who are in the roof sales. Um, it's hard. It's way harder than being an adjuster. Just for that reason alone is that we show up. There's no damage. There's damage. Doesn't matter. I'm getting paid. Right. One way or the other. Um, this guy, he's got to do, knock doors. He's got to make phone calls. He's got to make that $1,000 a month super duty payment. He's got to, yeah, he's got to pay for that big old pickup truck. <laughs> he's got to babysit that claim. He's got to, you know, he, right. he may have to order materials. He's also he's the general to, contractor on it too. That's the way they treat their salesmen. You're the yeah, your production you're the, manager on us. Yep. So it's not, it have, have a little bit of, be nice to those guys when you're on the field. Even if they're being a dick to you, yep. even if they're being a jackass to you, be nice to them because, you know, he's he probably is having a bad day because he's not get, selling any roofs. Right. Right. So I had this one. Um, selling roofs. Get to this one house. It's, uh, there's damage to it. Not a lot, but there's there's damage. And it's probably borderline at best to to get replaced. But, you know, we, it's a numbers game. We turn it in, you know, to get the homeowner to sign off on it. She t calls in the claim. The uh, adjuster comes out, independent adjuster. I meet him there. Super nice guy. We get up on the roof. He starts looking at stuff. He goes, let me show you how to sell a roof. And so he goes and he does his test squares. He says, but I got nothing on this slope. But over here, the valley, it's overlapped. I got to remove this to get to that. Now I got a right-facing slope 
which means I'm going to replace all the right facing slopes now. He goes, now nah, I just sold your roof. You know, the guy was so cool about it. Just showed me how to sell the roof, how to get the job done, how to get it done in the future, how to look at it. And at that point, I hadn't been showed that. I hadn't been shown how, you know, you overlap the valleys. If they're overlapped a certain way, you know, that's going to make a difference if you ever replace that slope or not. And, and his policy was, with that company, if you got one right-facing slope, all right-facing slopes get replaced. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know, and uh, but I've also seen it the other way around. It says, well, we're only going to replace that section. We're not going to replace that over there. I've seen that. And then you got to argue that one for a while. Right. But uh, and then on the flip side of that, I had one where this this roof is toast. I mean, just like you, you walk up. And, and this was impact-resistant shingles that had, you know, a huge. be so trash. I mean, this thing was just tore up. And the guy pulls up in his little white van with his lighter, lighter rack on top, you know, and, and uh, <laughs> right off the bat says, I'm going to get up on this roof, look at it. I don't need your help mm -hmm. to look at this. I've been doing this long enough. And, uh, and whatever decision I make today, that's the decision. I'm not coming back out here for a reinspect. That sounds like good customer service. You know, and uh, he goes, do we understand? I said, do we understand as long as you do your job properly, we won't have a problem. And that was what I said to him from my side. And he just like, you know, whatever. So we get up on the roof and walking around and he's looking at it. He goes, well, just because uh, I've got these, this is impact resistant. Just because we have granular loss doesn't mean that the integrity of the shingle is affected by it. I'm going, okay, I get that. You know, I'm not going to argue with you on that, you know, but, uh, so you're saying that there's impact wouldn't hard enough to hurt the integrity of this roof. Because then I said, are you going to inspect the decking at all? There, look underneath the, the bottom side of this thing. He says, well, I, I, you know, I, there's no holes in this roof. And I said, but there's, there's broke decking. And he goes, well, where's that at? I said, yeah, have you got in the attic yet? You know, the guy goes in and looks underneath the Sure enough, man, there's like, I found four or five places where it actually broke the decking. Jeez. You couldn't see it from, the outside but i looked at i smart enough to look in the attic looked in there found it guy replaces the whole roof you know oh, but, he, yeah. but when we were on the roof he wasn't replacing anything you know and it was just a bad attitude overall you know yeah. and then there, there was a few things he didn't want to some metal things he didn't, he didn't want to replace the chimney cap and you know why are you arguing with me about a chimney cap you know, know and that sort of thing and, and it just but the guy just had this horrible attitude about the whole thing and Sure enough, man, because he refused to pay for put a few things on the estimate and we we submitted it, you know, for on a supplement and it ends up that he's got the supplement on it and he rejected it. You know, we had to call for a reinspect and the guy that said he wasn't gonna come back out had to come back out. Yeah. But when he came back out, he came back out with a supervisor. Yeah. And the supervisor says, yeah, we don't have a problem here. Anything. Why are we not, why didn't we pay why for this did, first Exactly. Time, but this guy just, I, and I'm just assuming he may have had a bad day before he oh, got yeah. there. Yeah. You know, he probably was dealing with some other jerk, smart aleck, you know, yeah. uh, roofing salesperson. But that's not the way to start. That's not the way to start off with these guys. Regardless of the attitude that that they give you, you know, or, I mean, if if the roofing sales guy has an attitude, and just just be you all the way through it. Don't throw the attitude back to him. You oh, don't yeah. know what he's faced that day, and you'd be amazing how fast you can win those guys over as well. And, it's, and, it, and it goes both ways from both sides of it, for sure. You know, I just remember, it's not personal. It's, it's not just, personal. It's just work, man. They're trying to, you know, there's two things going on here. If you're the roofing guy that you know calls out the calls out the uh, the adjuster to look at it. Remember that adjuster's got a job to do based on certain guidelines. Yep. Okay. And every company, just because all state does it one way, doesn't mean the state farm's going to do it a no, do it that way. And we've always said this, you could have five different adjusters look at the same roof and come up with five different ways to fix it. You know? Yeah. And, but they all uh, should be within the ballpark of the same price. Yeah. Or we'll find the different damages. Now, if you're the, if you're the uh, roofing guy going to the adjuster, you know, don't come after him with both barrels, you know, right off the bat. I mean, the quickest way to make sure that he wastes your time is to piss him off. Yeah. Oh, you know? yeah. And uh, force you to do a reinspect. He's like, hey, you know what, man? Just to make your life harder, I'm going to go ahead and reject this. Yeah. I mean, no, I would, I would never do that. Oh. But I've, I've heard of guys that were doing that. Oh, of course. But just why do it, man? 
just be nice. Yeah. Like my uncle used to tell me, be nice to everyone. It only takes one person to hang a jury. <laughs> so <I'm> just, <laughs> right. I mean, so, <laughs> so be nice to everybody. Speaking of dad jokes. Oh. What do you got for me? Let's see. I have five remaining here. I'll write more later. Pick one. So, did you hear about the cartoonist that was found dead in the studio? No. The details are kind of sketchy. <laughs> uh, <laughs>